Hey everybody, this is Corey Chapman from Money Talk LA, where real people, real money, real talk. Today we're all about to get down and talk a little bit about the game of money. I have a really good friend of mine that's been around for quite a while now. I call him my renaissance man. I mean, he's done a little bit of everything, right? When it comes to the world of finance, he's uh, been an investment advisor out there. He's been in the real estate game. He's an entrepreneur. And I thought it'd be a great time for us to sit down and talk about what's been going on in the world, but more importantly, what's going on in your own personal economy out there. Hey, B, what's going on, man? Hey, Corey. Thanks for having me, man. Uh, happy to be a part of Money Talk LA. Oh, man, I'm excited about this. It's going to be a chance we get to talk and uh, and uh, act a little silly on camera and uh, see if we can talk <laughs> about some money, man. All right, so, all right. Here's the thing, man. So, you know, I was sitting here and I was thinking um, for a moment there, you know, you sent me a really cool uh, text message. It was a video that popped up. Uh, that gave a lot of the insight of, you know, racism in America and things that are going on. And the part that I wanted to kind of really talk about, it was like things that have happened in, in the world of, of the world, should I say, from a civil rights standpoint, that affects, you know, money, right? That affects the overall outcome that money has not been able to play a significant role in the African American market, right? And right. I thought this might be a really good conversation to talk about. I mean, dive into as much as we can and then really tie back into like what people can do right now to kind of get in the right place. You know, we're getting ready to launch our new program called uh, Challenge to Change Your Money Game with my my partner and cohort, uh, you know, Sherry James and on our Wealth Habits Academy. And I'm excited about that. But it really is about, you know, teaching people how to elevate their game when it comes to making money. And I think if you learn the right principles, the right habits, uh, and you give the opportunity to start doing that, you actually can take this to another level. So I want to dive into that first, starting off with that video, because it was powerful for me, man, when I got it from you. And I appreciate you sending it over, uh, because it was something that I never found, I didn't find a video that had everything all tied into one little location where you could get a great little glimpse of what was going on. So if you're okay with that, man, let's talk a little bit about that first. Oh, absolutely. Not a problem. And just, the, you know, a disclaimer, someone else shared the video with me. So yeah. it wasn't my idea. Someone shared it with me like last night or yesterday. Uh -huh. And I said, wow, I've never seen something so organized in one place. Let me give it to some, some friends that I have that obviously they influence a lot of people. And the more people, the more we can share our knowledge to give people tools to kind of like change their mindset, the better off we'll all be. You know, it's so funny. I posted on my Facebook page. I said, knowledge is power when action is taken. And Absolutely. so I, I led with saying that now that you have this knowledge, because I just dropped that video on my page to hip it into some knowledge, I said, now it's up to you to take action, right? So I think mean, that's is. exactly what this is all about, man. So I appreciate you sharing that with me. Look, there was one part in there that, you know, I've heard before and it talked about redlining, right? And it talked about, uh -huh. you know, certain demographics and communities weren't allowed to be able to purchase real estate in those areas, especially if you were African American. But the part that I didn't really know about it, it talked about the GI Bill, right? And how right. the GI Bill was given to, you know, um, so many more um, others, shall I say, than African Americans, right. which right. gave them the ability to use that money to go and purchase real estate, where African Americans and, and Blacks did not have that opportunity, which really surprised me. Like, I was thinking about that. We're, we're out there in the war, you know, giving our life to our country and so forth, but we weren't being afforded the same opportunities that the people that were sitting right beside us were, you know, and battling and fighting, fighting for their, you know, well-being and so forth, they weren't actually getting the same respect or, in that case, the same, um, 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 you know, benefit of being involved with that. So I thought that was interesting. Man. I didn't even, didn't even know that. And I was in the military. So, you know, that was something interesting. I'd love to get your thoughts on that, man. Yeah. Um, just to give an acknowledgement, my grandfather was a Navy cook. Mm -hmm. and he received a Purple Heart. You know, when you go into the Navy as a person of color back then, he was 80-something when he passed away. That was the role he had, was right. a cook. Right. So he was a great cook. Um, but it compounds the thing about the wealth. He got a house on a VA loan later on, much later in his life. But I remember here in LA, I had a listing that we had in our real estate office in Pacific Palisades. And imagine they paid $50,000 for that house and they sold it for $4 million. 
Wow. And imagine the CCNRs in certain areas of California, LA specifically, said it prohibited for people of color to, to be sold or property in that area. So think how smart a person feels that bought a house in Pacific Palisades that's now worth $4 million compared to the person who lived in View Park or not View Park, let's say Compton or, right. or some other area. They bought the same house, paid the same amount of money, but one guy feels like he's the smartest guy in the world. Right, right. And really what it came down to was about access, right? It was really about right. who had access to what and what they were having the opportunity to be able to take advantage of. Yeah, that, that was, you know, that was pretty intense. And I think there was another part in there that kind of really stood out to me when it started talking about the, the um, imprisonment rate, right? And how, and how they started, they would change the the law, for lack of a better term, right? They would change the law to make it more conducive to make sure that more black people were actually being prosecuted on lower offenses so that they could be more incarcerated in that process. Like I, like the numbers were just staggering in this video. And, I, and everybody who's watching this, I'm gonna put the link in here so that you can see this, but it just blew my mind when I was listening to all that, all that put in. And, and a great job to the gentleman who put this video together because I was, like I said, it was like a civil rights class 101 in a matter of like 20 minutes, you know, or, or whatever, yeah. you know, and it took it from all the way back into 1940s, I believe it was, and fast forwarded all the way over to where we are now. And yeah. it's showing the comparisons from the Democrats to the Republicans to, you know, uh, you know, Caucasians to Blacks to even Latinos in there and how the different demographics had changed over that whole period of time. It's, it's a really good video. Yeah, I was... I was, I mean, when I saw the information, I had never seen that much information all in one place. And obviously the incarceration, because you think that's something that we can't control. That You can't control just going outside and just gathering with some friends and you get arrested just for being there. Right, right. Yeah, because when they say it was, uh, uh, they were, they, for vagrants, right? Vagrancy, they, yeah. They put a law on there for vagrancy. You couldn't conjugate for a certain period of time in a certain area if you were of color. Like, I was like, what? You just like, you just make some mess up, you know? You like, I'm just going to put it into a law, you know? I was like, seriously? You know, that was just real. So, yeah, yeah that video was pretty intense, man, no doubt. It definitely was. Um, but, uh, yeah, I, I got a lot of knowledge out of that. But I, I say this to say, you know, not to, to harp on the process. I believe at the end of the day, you know, we have to do better, you know, all the way across the board. We have to find a way to – to be more inclined of knowledge and letting people know about things they didn't know. You know, it's so funny. I was talking to my, my oldest son the other day and I was thinking to myself that it wasn't until I got into college that I even learned about civil rights, you know? And so I went through a whole school process through elementary, junior high, high school, and never knew about lunch counter riots or mega evers or anything along that line, you know, and until yeah. I got to college and took an actual civil rights class, you know? So yeah. it's interesting. We have to do better about educating our children to understand where they come from. And also, more importantly, I think understanding what they need to do differently to affect change for the future. Well, one of the things that I, I have something on my, my day planner, and it's old. I think it's from 2008, actually, coincidentally, the last time we were in a, a, a yeah. huge downturn. And it says on there, adversity brings out skills and illicit talents that you otherwise would not even find without that adversity. That's so right. if we look at this pandemic, it's been a time for us to slow down. You're spending time with your family, uh, but also it should be a time for us to take responsibility on the personal development side. And this is what this show represents, an opportunity to say, okay, let me get some knowledge. Okay, now let me develop my, my tools, my skill sets. What am I good at? What am I, what am I going to, what's my next move? What's my plan? Yeah. yeah. No, I agree, man. You know, it's so funny because I know that, um, I think there's a different world out there, right? In the sense of, you know, it used to be traditionally you'd go to college to get a degree to move you into a better paying job, you know? Right. And I think that I look at the younger kids of the day and, and the different um, classes of people out there that a lot, I feel like at the end of the day, this is a perfect time for that 
knowledge industry to grow because there's so much opportunity of learning how to do better on the, on the world of the internet, right? You can find right. almost anything on the internet, right? Absolutely. There are, are, there are podcasts, there are, you know, YouTube channel videos. There are so many things out there that you can truly educate yourself with the knowledge that you need to have in order to become better at what you want to be. You know, I mean, unless you're doing something that's a, a skill set like a doctor or something like right. that where you have to, you know, that, I think these children today have such a huge opportunity to really, from an entrepreneurial standpoint, go to a whole nother level because there are so much options out there and so many availabilities and so much potential that you can take it to another level. Well, one of the things I have to say, say Corey, is this. Um, I observed you, we've known each other for over 14 years, probably almost, maybe almost 17 years, maybe. Yeah. My daughter's 14. And I've seen you build multiple business, million dollar businesses. And, but at the same time, I've seen you, your children grow. I've seen you impart that knowledge and wisdom with them. And I speak to that to the point, I saw my dad build a multi-million dollar business, but I don't feel like he gave me enough understanding of what was going on. I was just kind of like, a guy sitting in the stands right. as opposed to a guy on the field playing, playing in the game. You know what I mean? Yeah. So no, it's a whole different thing to watch your parents do something as opposed to your parents involving you in the business. Cause I see how you have your sons involved in the business and, and I see how their skill levels, they're advanced at such a young, such a young age. Right. And I think that's important for all the parents or, or, you know, mentors to look at who are you influencing and, how are you helping them get into the game? You know, don't just have them be spectators, get them in yeah. the game. Yeah. You know, it's funny you said that. Cause um, you know, I, it, it's funny cause I, I think of some of our conversations and, and I was laughing cause I tell my wife sometimes I said, Baron know a lot of names. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> I'm like, he'd be like, so, 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 so I'm getting them on the podcast. And I'm like, who? You know, and you're like, yeah, the dude was the first billionaire that did da da da. So, you know, and I laugh at, you know, that kind of thing. But like, it's always been for me about how do I affect change now? You know what I mean? Yeah. And more importantly, how do I get in proximity of the right people that can help elevate the, to, to elevate the game, right? Because I right. think that's a big deal, right? You know, Tony Robbins talks about proximity. He was talking about a story where he basically went out. And it was about him connecting with the right people, right? And those right people that he connected around and was spending time with opened him up to some really huge deals, you know, multi-million dollar deals, you know? Mm -hmm. And it was about the relationship of people that you're in proximity to that can help elevate your game, you know? So one of the things that I always try to do is that we talk about giving back, but more than just giving back, figure out how you can help elevate somebody's proximity. How do you give them access to that conversation that, you know, you want to hear the conversation? Because even if you can't contribute anything as far as something you can bring to the table yet, it's uh -huh. always good to hear those real strong, you know, those real strong conversations that are going on because you can pick up some stuff by just listening. You know what I mean? Sitting back, being a fly on the wall and hear how, you know, deals are done, how negotiations are done, how you go out there and, you know, figure out how to find the right deals, you know? It's about uh -huh. communication, and more importantly, it's the proximity of people that you work around. Well, to, just to add to that, I think um, if I look at your business and the things that you've done, um, the level of professionalism and the level of detail, and no matter what kind of business you're in, the professionalism and detail those are core elements of the success of the business, whether you're a financial advisor or a restaurant owner. If, if you're, whatever you decide you're gonna to put together, if you don't put the thought and the preparation into it, how can you expect anybody to come and continually patronize your business if your service isn't at a certain level? So these are like business fundamentals that if people master those, it's transferable. Yeah, you're absolutely right. I, I truly 100% agree with that because I think you know, I, I tell my kids all along is how you do anything is how you do everything, right? Yeah. And that is my word, okay? Because I believe <laughs> that, you know, if you don't show up to win the game and no one else is watching, when you right. go out there and play and everybody else is watching, you're going to fumble the ball. You right, know? right, you got to right. go in and, and play to win, you know, all practice. Yeah. You know, it ain't like uh, practice perfect. You gotta, you have to have perfect practice all the time, you know? Right. And that's the game. So 
I, I really think that that separates the difference between winners and losers, right? It's how Absolutely. you show up for the game, how consistent you are about the practice, and honestly, what you do when no one else is watching so you can step your game up even better. It's got to be you. You got to be your biggest push, right? You got to be the right. person looking in that mirror, looking back at yourself and say, you know what? I'm not happy with the results that I have, but I know that I can change it. And the only way right. I can change it is to start doing something different. I tell people all the time, you can't have better if you want to keep doing the same thing you've been doing, right? It's right. like Albert Einstein once said, right? Insanity is doing the same thing the same way and expecting a different result. So if you want to change the results, you got to do something different. No, I agree. And I didn't get a chance to see any episodes of the, the Michael Jordan um, last Whatever, what's the name of the, the name of the, the documentary? Yeah, I think it was like uh, the, the last day, right? The last dance. Or last something. dance. The last dance. Yeah. And but one of the things that the trainer that he and Kobe Bryant had, they shared. He said something in one of his videos. He said, "Good is the enemy of great." Mm -hmm. And for so many of us, you settle for being good at something, but you don't want to put the work in to be great. Yeah. And one of the things. Me being from Chicago, of course, I'm a Jordan fan. Jordan, one of the things he did was he pushed his guys in practice. So when it came to game time, he always rehearsed in his mind how he was going to win something. Same thing with Tiger Woods. They rehearse in their mind how they expect to perform. And they go hard when they practice. Yeah, most definitely. Most definitely. Well, let me ask you this, man. You know, what, what do you think is the key right now to success? Like if someone was to say, give me two things – two things that make you successful, two things that you can't live without, what would be those two things that you think would you'd want to say? Actually, if I were to say the two things, um, it would be two Ps. One is going to be patience, and the other one is going to be perseverance. Mm. And if I was going to take it to another level, you, you, you really have to, the other P would be that personal development piece you got to figure out what is it that you want to become better at than you are or what is it you already consider yourself pretty doggone good at and you got to you have to get to the point where it's like being a leader you can't walk in a room and somebody have to you have to announce hey i'm the leader you have to present yourself to the point where it's obvious this guy's the leader right. it's obvious this guy's the guy shows up you know he's got billions of dollars he just has that look He's not thirsty. He's not hungry. You know, everybody knows that's the richest guy in the room. He's the quietest guy. <laughs> right, right. You know, it's so funny you said that because I, I find that people who, who talk the most, right. you know, <laughs> I, I got this, I got that. I'm like, okay, yeah, okay. You know, those are the guys of the broke ones, right? They're the ones sitting there, no money in their pocket, right, sitting there talking all this mess. They are renting a Lamborghini for the weekend to pull up to some event that we're going through, you know? Right, and I'm right. like, they, no, they ain't got no money in their pocket, you know? We call that show money. You got show yeah, money. you know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> they sit in their representative, right? <laughs> but real talk, man, you know, I think honestly, man, I think it's about authentic, you know, how to be yeah. you know, authentic, you know, about whatever you do. The authenticity yeah. of that that people bring to the playing field is really what will make the difference. And I think if you are truly authentic, it shows, right? I right. Think, like, it's not something you got to brag about, it's not something you got to talk about. It just shows, man, because you just show up and they and you can see it in them, you know? It's, it's funny because I, I, I have a lot of, I'm, I'm fortunate if I have a lot of good connections of people that, I, that I'm around, right? And uh -huh. I get to go to these guys, and these guys are doing really well, and they're doing, you know, doing some decent numbers like that. But more importantly, they're good people. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like the way they treat their family, the way they treat other people, the way they give back to the community, the way they do the charities. Like, that's just who they are, you know? But yeah. if you look at them, you wouldn't even think they were anything as far as any kind of real money or anything like that. But they are so down to earth in the process but because of who they are, it's helped them elevate to where they're at. You know what yeah. I mean? And people always think, uh, well, when I make a lot of money, then I'm going to start giving more. No, you start giving now, regardless of whether you made it or not, because that's what's going to help you get to that next level, because you're doing more of it, you know? And all that happens is that you start to get better on in your life, right? Now you're able to give even more of what you started with. Right. And I mean, most critically, just to add on to what you're saying, if you don't have money, you have time. In yeah. time, whether it's with your family or you're giving to the homeless or the, or the greater public, 
that's the most valuable asset you have because it's the scarcest one we have. You right. never know when it's, it's up. That's right. It's the one thing you can't get back is time. I, mean, I tell everybody all day long, I'll give up everything except for my time. I've gotten pretty good about telling people no now because I realize that time <laughs> is very valuable. There right, are so right. many hours in the course of the day and I can't waste time. I'm trying to get to another level. So right. it's definitely paramount to know exactly how much time you're putting out there. So I, we, you asked the question of how do we go, where do we go from here in terms of being successful? Yeah. In my opinion, what we do is we have to, like we're doing right now, we have to iron sharp, sharpens iron. We have to lift sure. each other up. We have to lift out to the people that are within our circle and see, do a temperature check. How you doing? What, how can you synergize and figure out how you can help your team come up to, sure. another, to another level, to the next level? Yeah, no, I'm, I'm a huge proponent fan of mastermind groups, right? And I think those are huge. And I think that it's a great way, like you said, iron sharpening iron. And honestly, I'm a firm believer. I want to be the dumbest person in the group because I want to be able to suck in as much knowledge as I possibly can. Right. 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 And I was thinking the other day, I'm like, how do I get myself to another level? Right. How do I get to right. talk to the billionaire cast consistently where I can pick their brain and see what's going on? Because I feel like at this time I'm, I'm, I'm thirsty right now. I'm looking for that next level for me to, to really kind of know, um, What's next? You know, once you once you become a millionaire, how do you become a billionaire? You know what I mean? And, and that kind of deal, you know, because they're thinking different. They're doing things differently. They're circling around other people differently. They're doing everything on a whole nother level. And that's kind of where I'm wanting to see. So I think for me, I'm thinking about actually creating a mastermind group that will be called Proximity, right? And, uh, and that's what it's all about. It's about elevating to that next level. Those of us who maybe have gotten to the point where you've made some good, you know, decisions in your life and you've done pretty well. Now you want to go to another level. You know what I mean? Cause I feel like you got to always keep going to the next level. So uh, I'm interested in learning some more about that, I guess. Well, in, re in regard to, to, to that, you were talking about um, not being the smartest person in the room or, or something. And I think one of the things, a lot of people, they can be hard on themselves. Obviously you, you, you would never fall in that category, but in terms of, everybody brings something unique to the table mm -hmm. that goes back to the authentic authenticity no matter what skill level what no matter what knowledge level your opinion and your thought process is going to be different than anybody else right because i mean that is the creativity of of who we are if we look at i watched some documentaries recently music documentaries nina simone quincy jones um the the godfather the black godfather and i saw that in music we have so much creativity as people of color and we're very willing to collaborate and we're, we're very willing to, for it to be more than one genius in the room. Right. Although in business, in corporate America, they make us perceive that it can only be one smart guy in the room. Uh, Barack Obama was the smartest guy you guys had, made a president. There's plenty of Barack Obamas in the world. There's right. plenty of guys, they have a different name. They look like Barack. They talk like Barack. <laughs> There's a lot of them. You, right. just, you just pick one to make president. Right. <laughs> but they, they, they make it seem like it's an outlier. We never had a guy like Barack Obama. We've right. never right. seen a guy like that before. <laughs> right. <laughs> that's why that sounds like the podcast we talked about with the Brothers Day, right? When we were talking. And then and, and I think it was Ray was like, yo, we all out here. We you know we engineers, doctors, lawyers, financial right. advisors, right? <laughs> yeah, no, I agree. I agree one hundred percent. Well, you know, I think also it's important for us to be able to mentor the young, you know, the kids that are coming up so they can see, you know, what's out there that depicts who they are so they can see it's more than just being in the entertainment field or being in the, you know, sports field or whatever, that you can Absolutely. be knowledgeable in the world of finance or money or real estate development or anything along that line, you know, because right. there's availability out there, you know. And you just got to see other people like us that look like them they can kind of emulate to, you know? I think if it was one thing that I could leave with the audience that I think was someone shared this to me that is really important. We so used to be in W-2, which is an employee, mm -hmm. or we want to be an independent employer and be a 1099. But we need to be balance sheet guys. And what that means is if you got a balance sheet, you got assets. You either got assets that are appreciating or you got businesses that are cash flowing. When you got that, you call the shots. Come on now. 
Come on now. You want to you have a, a CEO after your name. <laughs> and have some, partners, have some employees, okay? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But real talk, it's got to be to the point where you, where you come in when you want to come in, okay? Right. Not because you got to come in. That's a whole right, right. game then. Right, right. For sure, for sure. Well, cool, B, man. I appreciate a little bit of time we've had on this. It was good chewing and mess with you, just talking about anything under the sun that kind of relates to the world and what's going on. And, and uh, you know, it's always good to sit down and chat with you. I know you're doing some big things, too. So, tell me a little about your podcast, man. I know the framer around it. You've been having some some big people on there. So tell me a little about yeah, that. Yeah, I've been fortunate. You, like, seeds that you plant today, you may not see a harvest for a long time. Come on. And man. one of the things, you know, about me personally is uh, I have a 14 year old daughter. I went through a divorce and a lot of people don't think that divorce affects them. It slows your momentum down, not only just physically, but mentally. And you have to really find yourself and find your sea legs, if you will, again. I've been fortunate. I had, you know, I had a good background, but if it weren't for the persistence that I had and the relationships that I built over time, you know, I wouldn't have had the success in terms of I have a little consulting company, Triumphary Group. Um, my podcast, Silicon Beach Mobile Startup, it's on Spotify and about seven other platforms. Um, I've interviewed some pretty interesting people, but the thing that I learned from those people is there is no equivalent. Just because you have a lot of money doesn't mean you're very smart. No, that's not, that's not, it's not equal. Right. It, it's a matter of timing, opportunity, and then what obstacles you had to go through to get to where you are. But also, when you look at the, the totality of it, you look at, there's a lot of wealthy people that are very unhappy. And you gotta look at, are you happy where you are? Are you giving of yourself? And that is the real wealth is when you feel like you have more than enough to give, that's real wealth. And it's, it's not of just about your resources, it's about giving of yourself. Yeah, no, I agree, man, I agree. When we created Wealth Habits, um, it, we would always start off with saying that if, if all you have is money, you're not winning, you know? Yeah. Because wealth is more than just cash and money in your hand. It's so bigger than that. And I think, unfortunately, when we think of wealth, we think of money, right? Right. We don't think about time. We don't right. think about relationships. We don't think Absolutely. about family. Like, there's all these things that wealth really, truly means, right? It's yeah. not about just the dollar amount of how many zeros you have in your bank account. It's really about the wealth of treating you and being who you are and who you're becoming along the journey. And I think yeah. that's a big part of the process. So I agree 100% with you, man. That's, uh, that's definitely important. I think people need to really understand that. Uh, it's not about how smart you are, but how much you enjoy the journey along the way so you can have the things you want out of life. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. Well, I definitely True, appreciate man. your opportunity, Corey. <laughs> well, I appreciate it, man. I appreciate it. I'm looking forward to the next go around. I have to, have to get on your podcast sometime, man. Uh, invite me out. I love the chat. <laughs> All right, sounds good. All right, brother. Well, take care, man. Have a good day. I appreciate your time. As always, everybody, this is Money Talk LA. Real people, real money, real talk. This is Corey Chapman. I look forward to talking to you guys on our next episode next week. Bye-bye.